Welcome back from the bye week, Dolphins fans. It's Ben Morgan of the Fins Up Network with first of two Week 11 preview videos for our Miami Dolphins against the Las Vegas Raiders. As always, today we're talking top matchups, keys to victory, latest team news, injury news, but I'm going to be switching it up for this week's final preview and prediction video. We're going to actually welcome in a guest from the other side. We're going to see what the enemy, what they've got in store for us this week. We're actually going to be welcoming in a guest, Mitchell Renz of the Raider Report from Chat Sports. He will be joining me for Saturday's video. So typically in this video, I ask for, for questions um, for that preview and prediction video. We're going to omit that this week. We've got a whole list of things to get to with Mitchell already. So your homework assignment for today's video instead your keys to victory, your top matchups that you're going to be watching against the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, go ahead and drop those in the comments. We'll likely get back to the normal things um, for next week's video, but since I got a good relationship with Mitchell, wanted to take the opportunity to get him on since we play the Raiders this week. But let's paint a little bit of a picture as to where we stand now coming out of the bye week, because you know if you dove into some, some non-Miami Dolphins football from last weekend, you probably noticed that things broke our way in nearly every single game. The way we wanted it to work out, it did, except for like the Steelers game. The Steelers beating the Packers was about the only thing that didn't go our way, and that one's even not that big of a deal right now. But we are obviously 6-3, and three, first place in the AFC East, currently the number four seed in the AFC playoff picture. Second in the AFC East is the Bills. They've dropped to five and five. Who the hell saw that coming? Losers of their last two. The New York Jets, they've been floating around, but they've also lost their last two. They are now four and five on the season. And the New England Patriots, since they since they habitate in our division, we'll talk about them, but they're two and eight. They are no longer in the picture. How great is that to say? Just you've got you've got to love that. You've got to just embrace that. Let's say it one more time. New England Patriots are not in the playoff picture this season, Dolphins fans. Speaking of this, though, we've got three divisional games remaining. We got two against the Jets. We wrap up the regular season week 18 with the Buffalo Bills. We are not scheduled to go against a team currently with the win winning record until week 16 when we play the Dallas Cowboys. So during the bye week, we put out a video. And we talked about how that narrative likely isn't going anywhere for a while about not being able to win a win, beat a winning team. But at the end of the day, take care of the opponents that are on your schedule. And if we can take care of all these opponents leading up to week 16, we'll be in pretty good shape, especially what I mentioned about the other teams that we needed to lose, losing like we had, like we had talked about during the bye week. But with that said, we've got some injury news that's rather important to the team's long-term success as well. Because earlier this week, our stud rookie running back, Devon A. Chan, his 21-day window to return officially opened this week. So obviously that's good news. Sounds like he could have played after the injury if he'd have been wearing a brace. However, as the Dolphins have done this year, no big surprise, they've been playing it safe. Got the long game in mind. They did the same thing with A-Chan. Gave him more time to rest. Now he has the opportunity to appear as soon as Sunday against the Raiders. He did get in, the, in a limited practice session on Wednesday. We'll likely talk about more um, about that with Mitch as well. But that is damn good news about Devon A-Chan. And Jalen Waddle, full participant on Wednesday. And why that's important, because he actually hasn't missed a, an actual game, an outright game, except for after he got hurt against the New England Patriots. And then we put up 70 against the Broncos without him. But why this is important because Jalen Waddell has not been healthy all year. He gets hurt in the joint practice with the midsection. He got the concussion we talked about. He had the ankle leg injury early in that game against the Chiefs. He just, in and out of that game, he wasn't himself. You could argue that no one benefited more from this rest than Jalen Waddell. I am hoping and expecting big things from him over the course of the second half of this season. Thinking we're going to get some long bombs from him at some point, just a matter of time before he starts making his presence felt even more in this offense. Unfortunately, on the offensive line, we, we get Connor Williams back, we get Teron Armstead back, but then we get hindered by the guards. Neither Robert Hunt or Robert Jones practiced on Wednesday. Sunday is looking fairly bleak for, for the two of those, for lack of a better term. If they can't go, it's likely Liam Eichenberg, probably at left guard. It's Lester Cotton, likely at right guard. Things could change, but based on the team's history of 
replacing those guys in the past. That's how it's been done. Let's get into those top matchups. Keys to victory. We're going to talk more about Max Crosby uh, with Mitch later this week as well. But man, when you think about this Raiders team and specifically their defense, it's Max with two X's. How badass already is that? But this guy is on a tear. Basically, since he's been in the league, nine and a half sacks this year, 13 tackles for a loss. Now, I've been, I've been, when I've been watching him, it was great to be able to watch that game last week. Raiders, Jets, who'd have thought that'd be a good game to watch? But it was perfect because it was our next two opponents. So if you're watching that game, he's primarily lining up against your right tackle. So in our case, that's Austin Jackson. However, they will move him around, so he'd probably get matched up with Teron Armstead as well. But the thing is, they're not scared to use him in twists and stunts as well. And now we're talking about playing with two backup guards. Not ideal. Both of them have experience, but they're not the starter quality that we would hope. So the importance of knowing where he is at every single play with all those sacks, with the tackles for losses, with what he can do to blow up a play and create turnovers, we need to know where he is all the time. That's a huge matchup for this game when the Dolphins are on offense. Behind Miles Garrett, TJ Watt, and Micah Parsons, Max Crosby is the next best odds for defensive player of the year. So yeah, he's, he's had a hell of a career and he's having a hell of a season. But I also want to talk about the Raiders because obviously we've talked about this a couple times too. Recently fired the GM, offensive coordinator, head coach. They moved on from Jimmy Garoppolo. They put in Aiden O'Connell. In O'Connell's first start, he took no sacks. They won 30 to 6. His second start, he took three sacks. They only won by four, 16 to 12. Now that stat alone, it's, it's probably a bit misleading. It's not painting a full picture by any means. But it does show a little bit about that importance of pressuring and applying that pressure to young quarterbacks for numerous reasons. It's the, it's the potential of creating turnovers. It's sacks that can lead to longer downs and distances. It's forced early throws, rush throws, early decision making. It impacts his confidence. All of these things are escalated when you're talking about a rookie quarterback just in general. Now talk about a rookie quarterback that didn't have many expectations coming into this year making his third start ever. And now the nice thing is we have got the guys. We have got the guys to get this done. Bradley Chubb, five sacks over his last four games, six total sacks on the season, four forced fumbles on the season. His play from when he came to Miami, he had the, the pass rush win rate. He was getting the pressures. He was getting to the quarterback a little bit here and there. Well, those stats turned into actual statistical production in regards to sacks and hits and forced fumbles. And guess who else is getting healthier as the bye week goes on? And as the last few weeks leading up to the bye week, obviously it's Jalen Phillips. He's now up to three and a half sacks on the season, including one sack in each of his last three games. So he's been getting there as well. But now guess what makes this duo even better? The healthy secondary. We've seen Jalen uh, Ramsey's impact already. But when you got Ramsey, when you got X, when you got Kohu in the slot, Brandon Jones got out of concussion protocol on Wednesday. You got Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Elliott. If I didn't say Javon Holland, you got Javon Holland as well. You've got all these guys that can be more bodies in the secondary and hang with these wide receivers and tight ends and pass catchers all that much longer, making guys like Bradley Chubb, Andrew Van Ginkle, Jalen Phillips, Emmanuel Ogba if he gets in. We have all these guys that can get to the quarterback now with all that secondary help as well. So you're looking at less blitzing, more guys in the secondary, longer longer coverage. And we talk about a, a quarterback making his third start. Get to him, pressure him. You got the horses in the secondary. Now get around the edge and take care of him as well. That is what I have got for this particular video. But like I said, let's hear your top matchups, your keys to victory as well. Put those in the comments. We'll be back with that final preview and prediction video with Mitch as we talked about. That is what I have got for today, Miami Dolphins fans. And until next time, fins up.